What's going on guys? Right with Teacher now, so we're back with the RBL Season 4. This is my draft breakdown. The RBL draft has been concluded, so the Royal Bar with Revolmies, of course, have got their draft, so we're gonna talk about it today. And we are gonna go through each individual pick, why I picked it, etc. etc. Of course, I'm gonna be doing my best not to reveal some of my little hidden texts as we go through the draft. Of course, as you can probably tell on the screen, there's going to be no webcam for this video. I'm actually recovering from being sick, but I got to get this video out for you guys. So here we go. So now just to remind you guys, for those who did not watch my pre-draft video, I highly encourage you to watch that. I did talk about my pre-draft thoughts um, in that video, and there's some pretty interesting things uh, that went down on there. But yeah, either way, uh, just to remind you guys, this is a Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Doubles Draft League. Uh, the season, a bit of a departure from Sword and Shield. And uh, while I am pretty reserved about this format, I'm not a huge fan of it myself. Uh, it pretty much resulted in a very top-heavy uh, draft, uh, which is true for basically everybody in the league. Uh, so this league is going to be no different in that regard. Uh, but we are in a division with seven other people, so definitely exciting. We were unfortunate enough to be pick five out of eight. Uh, which is a pretty terrible pick position, uh, especially in a small league and a board like this. Uh, even more so when Ben Zossim and Playmaker, who were the people I was kind of targeting as like the better value drafters in the league, uh, they were either side of me in the draft, which meant that every single pick I had, I was losing at least two value picks. Uh, regardless, uh, and in this league, there was definitely a lot of sniping going on. Uh, I didn't really get sniped, to be honest. I pretty much got everything I wanted. Uh, but let's get on straight into the first picks. So, uh, the first round of the draft pretty much went just about as much as I expected. Um, I expected to see things like the Azu, uh, Tyranidar, Cresselia, all of those picks kind of go early, Togekiss, uh, they were not surprising to see go early, but the first pick that did go down, and you can probably tell by the stats on the screen, that got down to me in pick five is, uh, Latios. Now, Latios is very, very powerful. Uh, this thing can offer an awful lot. You can see his base stats on the screen. is absolutely nothing to sniff at. At 130 special attack and 110 speed effort and speed. Uh, this can also be buffed up by Soul Dew, uh, which is incredibly powerful on the special attack and speed side. And honestly, its physical side is nothing to sniff at either. It does get a myriad of coverage moves on both the physical and the special side, as well as some really, really handy support moves like Tailwind, Helping Hand, etc., etc., so this thing can be very versatile, it's very very scary, it can also switch in quite freely on ground type moves thanks to its levitate ability, which is always nice to have access to. This thing is so good to build a draft around, um, because you can really play around uh, just about anything. This can pretty much do whatever you need for a team in any week, uh, which is always nice to have one of those for your first pick. Uh, I was kind of surprised this pick got down to me ahead of things like the Tyranitar, but uh, I am not su super surprised. I believe Sean actually said during the draft that he was favorite drafting and he was immediately before me. So uh, it does not surprise me. Uh, but that does mean that I do need some kind of answer for Tyranidar, of course, because as much as Latios does get a lot of good coverage moves, uh, Tyranidar and other dark types like Weavile, etc. like that can be a little bit of a problem. Uh, so next up on my pick, enter my answer for uh, Tyranitar, also for Cressalia as well, and that is going to be Scizor. Scizor got back to me, uh, kind of somewhat surprising. Uh, Scizor I felt like was a pretty solid round one pick. Uh, very hard hitting with that 130 base attack and technician ability, means those bullet punches are going to hit like an absolute truck. Uh, something to bear in mind, even technician bug bite can be very very scary. Uh, especially if your opponent's running a bunch of berries. Uh, they probably don't really want to be running that. And to be honest, defensively, this thing is nothing to be sniffed at. Now, while this thing is outsped by Cresselia, I can't remember if Cresselia has Mystical Fire in this game. I don't think it does. Uh, but even if it does, we can still pretty much tank a hit because we have decent enough bulk. Uh, we do hit this thing incredibly hard, nonetheless. And this kind of baited out people picking the Weavile, etc. If somebody wanted to go for it, this was kind of already my answer, uh, which is pretty nice. Also, the other things that Sizzle can really take on are fairies. Uh, there's not that many fairies in the format, uh, because uh, there weren't that many fairy types pre-gen 5, so... Uh, this can answer pretty nicely. Uh, the only fairy that it doesn't really answer particularly well is Azumarill, uh, which is something that Haley uh, first picked in the entire draft. 
so we kind of counterpicked ourselves in the first couple of picks, but I kind of knew that um, an Azu answer was going to get back to me because not everybody was going to draft against Azu straight away. Hey, and a lot of people that were potentially going to be drafting against Azu were probably going to go for electric types, which Haley did cover very well in the draft uh, with Pachirizu, which gets Lightning Rod plus Follow Me. So, uh, pretty intelligent uh, pick from Haley there. But um, our answer for Azu is going to be a Mon that resists both its um, Aqua Jet and its Play Rough for its stab moves. And that is going to be none other than the Green Giant himself. Shoutouts to Rotten Tomato. Of course, we got the Venusaur. Now, Venu, I did not plan on picking. Um, at first, I was not going to go for Venusaur because I've drafted Venusaur before. I've played with Venusaur in the past. Uh, so I was going to look at something a little bit different. Um, I had like pretty much every option that I wanted. Um, I had Tentacrawl if I wanted to go down the Tier 3 route. Um, I had Gastrodon in Tier 1, which I thought was a little bit aggressively high-tiered. Uh, in my opinion, in this format, I felt like Gastrodon was not value for Tier 1. Um, personally, I know a few people might disagree with me on that one, but that's totally fine. Uh, I was also looking at Tangrowth as a potential option. Um, I decided against Tangrowth in the end. Mostly because I wanted the um, poison coverage too. This gives me another answer for fairies just in case there's or isn't a thing. Uh, so, Venu does a lot. Uh, it's got decent enough special bulk as well. Hits pretty hard on the special side. Again, much like Latios, it actually has decent stats on the physical side and a pretty average speed tier. Obviously, Chlorophyll and Sun is definitely a thing. I believe Haley drafted Torkoal, uh, which I don't actually think fits our team very well, personally. But, um, well, actually, do, maybe, maybe I'll do a different video, actually, talking about my division and talking about the draft and how it went down. Uh, if you guys want to see that, make sure to leave a like and a comment down below and let me know, and then I'll consider making that video. But, uh, Venu, of course, does hit pretty well. Uh, can be pretty good even outside of Sun. Uh, this thing can be tanky, can live a hit. Uh, you can EV this thing to live um, plus 6 Aqua Jet and plus 6 Play Rough from Azumarill, which is pretty much why I drafted it. Um, I pretty much wanted to make sure that Azu just does not set up and kill me, uh, because that is always going to be a problem. Latios can live an Aqua Jet, but doesn't live a Play Rough, and Sizzle doesn't one-shot um, after Ballet Drum Citrus Berry with, with Banded Bullet Punch. So I needed to make sure I had something that can punish the Azu and threaten it out, and Venu does a pretty good job of that. So... Definitely makes sense. This thing does get a decent enough move ball that I can play around um, anything I need to. So I'm pretty happy with the Venu pick. Uh, this was something that I was not quite expecting to get to me, but then uh, nobody really drafted Sun until Haley drafted Torko like way later. So it was definitely pretty interesting. Now, it's pretty understandable at this point, given that a lot of people were drafting their tier twos, that I felt pretty comfortable not drafting my tier two. Uh, obviously, um, Ninetales was sitting in tier 2, so a lot of people probably would have expected me to draft that. Seeing as, um, these three picks are all tier 1 picks, which means I can't draft an extra tier 1, uh, with my free points. I don't have enough slots to do that. Um, so, if I wanted a Sunsetter, I should probably go with tier 2. Well, spoiler alert, I didn't actually do that. Uh, we'll get to my tier 2 pick as we go further down the draft, but... My next pick coming down, uh, I was looking at fairies. Um, as you can see, I already have a dragon and a steel type, and I do like to complete my competitive goals even in doubles, just because it gives me key coverage and key resistances, which is always handy to have access to. So I was looking down the list of fairies that were available. Um, obviously, I couldn't afford uh, God of War um, in tier one, so I had to avoid that. Mr. Mime was sitting in tier two, which I wasn't super keen on. Um, I didn't want to draft my tier 2 yet, plus I didn't really want to double down on Psychic, even though it would have been pretty decent um, as a potential option um, for screens, etc. and stuff like that. I didn't really feel like I wanted Mr. Mime on this team. Uh, I don't think Mr. Mime really fit what I wanted to go for. Uh, there was also Wigglytuff sitting down in tier 4, um, which, again, it's a competitive mon, so I had a good chance of drafting it. I could easily have picked it up if I so wanted to. In fact, I'm not actually entirely sure if Wigglytuff got drafted. I don't remember it getting drafted. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. I'll have to look at the draft again afterwards. Um, but sitting in tier 3 is a pick I've actually used before in singles, but I've never tried it in doubles, but I wanted to give it a go. And that is Granbull. Now, Granbull is the only other physical fairy. Uh, obviously, Azu is the primary one. But Granbull chilling out. Um, 
does actually pretty decent. It's not got the best stats in the world, but it's just about slow enough that I can run it under Trucker if I wanted to. Uh, I can definitely run like Min Speed, potentially even Iron Ball shenanigans, uh, which would be pretty interesting. This thing does get access to Intimidate, which is the primary reason I drafted it. Um, I wanted a Fairy type and I wanted Intimidate. Um, I couldn't really do both uh, with Tier 3 picks. Obviously, Tauros was sitting in Tier 3, which is the other pick I was considering uh, for an Intimidate user. But I decided to go with Gramble. Uh, Gramble, of course, being now pure Fairy type instead of the pure Normal type that it started out being, does actually still merit it a lot. Obviously, being immune to dragon helps. This is another way for me to punish dark types with sizzle can punish, uh, which is pretty handy. Intimidate being a very nice crippler. This thing does also get quick feet and rattled, which are two pretty decent abilities in doubles. Um, I can definitely run like a toxic orb or something like that, um, or bait like, like um, status moves onto Gramble to get the quick feet proc if I wanted to, if I needed the extra speed. Uh, Rattled, of course, gives me a speed boost if I'm hit by, like, Bug or Dark type attack. And I think by a poison move as well, I could be wrong on that one. Uh, but I obviously don't want to be taking a poison move on a fairy type. But that can also give me a speed boost, uh, which is pretty nice. It also procs on whoever I get intimidated, which is also pretty nice. So, Grandboard does have some options. This thing gets insane amount of coverage moves. It gets the Elemental Fangs, it gets Earthquake, it gets Crunch, it gets Stone Edge. Uh, <laughs> this thing can really do a lot. It gets cross combat as well. Um, which is pretty nuts. This thing can do a ton of damage, um, uh, rocketing in that 120 attack. So I've got some pretty good versatile offensive mons already. Um, and that pretty much shapes up the draft pretty nicely. So we've wrapped up our Fairy Dragon Steel Core. We only have a Grass type right now. So I was looking at my options of Water type. Uh, again, I was kind of cautiously looking in Tier 2 just to see if there was a Water type I particularly wanted. Um, there wasn't really anything jumping out at me, to be honest. Uh, one or two picks did come to mind, but I ended up dropping those very quickly. Uh, because I realized I wanted something that meant that things couldn't necessarily vault switch on me particularly freely. Um, alongside the potential, um, for, like, extra key resistances. Uh, so I drafted another classic singles pick of mine. I actually picked up Lantern. Um... Lantern doesn't have the best stats in the world, uh, unfortunately, outside of its HP stat, which is pretty solid. But with access to Water Absorb as well as Vault Absorb, uh, this thing can actually be pretty handy as a pivot. Uh, this thing does get access to Thunder Wave as well for speed control. It does get Airy Impulse as well, so I can cripple those special attackers, uh, which is pretty nice. It does get a couple of other key uh, coverage moves like Dazzle Gleam and Ice Beam, so definitely something to watch out for. Um, this thing can sneak in a few extra moves that it may not... not not um, be predicted to have, which is always handy to have access to. Lantern definitely does a decent amount for this team, uh, so I'm pretty excited to have it. This does also give me a soft answer to Azumarill if Pachirizal is dead on Haley's team, so uh, that is also something else to consider, which is pretty nice. Uh, we do get some good pivoting options. I can do some pretty fun shenanigans with this set. Uh, there's some few things that I can do that I'm not going to reveal. But uh, hopefully Lantern can do a decent job for me. Um, so at this point, I mean, uh, we're pretty much all scraping down the barrel of like not fully evolved Pokemon. Um, at this point in the draft, pretty much everybody has drafted uh, their higher tier picks with the exception of um, Alistair Ferrophon, who still had a couple of high tier picks and free slots left. She didn't actually draft um, her free points until like way later. Uh, but looking down at this team, I wanted to make sure I had things that can deal with things like font or um, redirection. Um, just to just allow to protect some of my more offensive threats. Um, and honestly, sitting in tier 4, uh, kind of surprised me that this got back to me is actually Riolu. Uh, Riolu honestly has pretty garbage stats, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, but with access to Prankster and a few very key utility moves, Follow Me being one of them, uh, does also get things like Helping Hand. I uh, can also run Prankster Howl if I want to set up for like Gramble or Sizzle to just carry. Uh, that's kind of fun. Uh, it does also get ahead a couple of uh, extra utility moves, which is very, very handy. Prankster Taunt uh, being a thing. Uh, <clears throat> this thing can be very, very handy. Uh, obviously, it doesn't have the stats to really live any more than one hit, so probably going to have to run Focus Sash. It is worth pointing out. That in BDSB doubles, there is no Violite, so uh, not fully evolved Pokemon are really, really 
kind of not great in any of this format, but we have to draft some anyway because we have to fill our lower tier slots. We can't just use our high tiers. Uh, but Riona does get some decent moves. It can be a good support mod. Uh, can also hit reasonably okay. It doesn't have the best stats, but it does get Bullet Punch, so I can play around priority moves if I so wish. Uh, it does get some moves that Lucario does get. Uh, not too many, though. So, we only definitely a decent little supporter for the team. Uh, can do a few little cool shenanigans. Uh, can even run Copycat if I want to, and there's some very fun things you can do with that, which may or may not come into play. Uh, we will soon find out. Uh, but next up on the list is going to be my Sunsetter. Um, I still was debating if I wanted to pick up Ninetales in my Tier 2 slot, but there was actually something else in Tier 2 that I was looking at that I had my eye on. Um, that uh, pretty much the only person who could snipe me at this point was Alice. And to be honest, I had so many picks in Tier 2 that I was looking at, Alice couldn't really snipe all of them off me anyway. But I went down into Tier 5... And I picked up Vulpix. Uh, <laughs> I feel like this shouldn't be too much of a surprise. Um, I did draft a Sun Core with Venusaur. Uh, Latios can also be very, very strong in Sun too. Um, and actually, surprisingly, Sizzle can also be decent in Sun. But um, not all that much. But of course, Vulpix being my uh, Sun Sarah choice. This thing can actually also do some other things too. Uh, I guess that's like the Will-O-Wisp does get some good coverage moves as well. So I could potentially use this more offensively instead of just a pivot for Venusaur. Uh, but honestly, Vulpix's main job is to set up the Sun. I believe someone drafted Rain in our division. I might be wrong in that. Uh, but I know Rain did get drafted in one of the divisions. But yeah, Vulpix is my Sun Setter. It does give me my Fire type, of course. Uh, not the best bulk or whatever. But it can be okay offensively if I need to use it. It can be a fun little Scarfmon. Uh, kind of similar to how I plan to use Alolan Vulpix in RBL Season 3, but unfortunately I never got to play Zeph. Because uh, Zeph unfortunately had to drop out. Uh, so, uh, kind of similar situation here with uh, Kanto Vulpix this time. Uh, fun fact, Kantonian Ninetales were my favorite Pokemon before Rabambi existed. So I drafted the baby form of it just for the funsies. But yeah, Vulpix going to be my Sunsetter of choice. Uh, can be pretty handy. I do have other Sunsetters as well. A couple of other Mons on this team does get access to Sunny Day. So uh, definitely something to consider. But Vulpix are going to be my primary Sunsetter if I so choose to bring Sun. So next up, sitting down in Tier 4. Uh, there's quite a few Tier 4 picks that I was considering. Um, I had a few ideas in mind. But I wasn't entirely sure what I was going to get for my other Tier 5 pick. Um, uh, and so I decided to be a little bit cautious and grab my ground type. Uh, this just kind of covers for, uh, Vault Switch as well, alongside the Lantern. Uh, so I picked up Pilot Swine. Now, Pilot Swine obviously does add a little bit extra to my fire weakness. I do obviously have Sizzle that's quite weak and Venusaur is also weak. Uh, but I do have some decent fire resists, so I'm not super scared of it, of course. Drafting Pilot Swine. Gives me some decent physical bulk, uh, gives me a little low speed tier, but does get access to Ice Shard for priority, uh, which can run, run some fun little sets. There's some fun ideas I have with running Ice Shard sets and stuff like that. It does get decent moves, uh, something I can play around. Thick Fat, of course, being probably one of its better abilities. Oblivious is also nice because it prevents me from getting intimidated. Uh, that is something else to bear in mind, too. Uh, but yeah, this thing can be useful. Uh, it's mainly there as a, folk, uh, as a bulky pivot. This thing does actually get some very, very fun little moves that I want to try out, and we'll see if I can make it work. Uh, but the reason I picked this here is because I did not expect um, my other Tier 5 pick to actually be available. Uh, I'm not going to lie, I did not realize this was a Tier 5 pick, and I feel like this was a mistake. Uh, I feel like this should have been a Tier 4 pick. And that is going to be Gligar. Now... Gligar in Tier 5 is kind of nuts, because Tier 5 is pretty much Pokemon that need Violite to survive. Well, Gligar doesn't really need that. Uh, Gligar with decent speed does get access to weather moves, uh, does get taunt as well, uh, as well as decent physical bulk. And Hyper Cutter is actually kind of nice, it prevents me from getting intimidated, uh, which means that even though my base 75 attack may not look like much, it does get some pretty nice moves that I can play around and make good use of. Uh, this does have a quad ice weakness, but we do have plenty of ice resists, so I'm not super scared about that. Um, but yeah, Gligar can fit into a lot of teams. Yes, it is double ground, obviously the, the extra ground with Pyroswine, but that's not a huge deal. 
uh, because more often than not, both of these are probably not going to come to the same game. Uh, there are some strats where both of them fit into this team really nicely, uh, but they don't fit into the team in a team of six. But it has a decent role. Obviously a little bit of pace, but a physical bulk uh, does not go amiss. Can be a decent pivot, can be a weather setter if I need it. And my last pick. So, um, all the way down, I was looking at tier twos. Um, uh, one thing that is pretty well known in Sun teams is that something that pairs up um, very nicely for Chlorophyll uses a rock type Pokemon. Uh, rock type Pokemon actually deal with uh, most of Grass's weaknesses. Uh, being fire, flying, ice. Um, obviously there's bug as well, but Venusaur is not weak to bug because it's part poison type. So that's something to bear in mind. It does have a psychic weakness, but we have ways to punish psychic. Uh, so I'm not super bothered by that. Um, but my last pick is something I actually had in my RBL Season 2 team. And that is gonna be a Regirock. Now, Regirock does serve a lot of very valuable purposes on this team, uh, obviously being insanely bulky uh, with that base 200 defense and 100 speed F with alongside the ADHB. With clear body, you can intimidate it either, so you can drop its stats, which is very, very nice. Uh, this means that you can never cripple this defensively. You have to go offensive pressure into it, uh, which can be a little bit annoying. Regirock, of course, being pretty slow, uh, does give Trick Room something to think about. Um, we do have, I believe, two Trick Room cores in this team. I believe Taken drafted a Trick Room core, uh, as well as Alice's team is pretty much primarily Trick Room, so uh, that is something to bear in mind. I can run Curse Regirock, stuff like that, to really threaten out the Trick Room mons. Um, Curse is actually extremely strong. This thing does get Drain Punch too to punish things like Snorlax. Uh, so that is something to bear in mind. Regirock does hit very, very hard. Uh, it may be surprising to some people how much this can do, but I'm excited to use Regirock again. I've had it uh, a few times. I did actually build a VGC team, funny enough, with Torkoal Venusaur and Regirock in it. Uh, I actually did pretty well on the Sword and Shield ladder with it, so I'm excited to give it another go again in BDSP. It doesn't have all of the moves yet because there is no Pokemon Home. Uh, I'm not actually sure what's going to happen if Pokemon Home drops anytime soon uh, as to whether we're allowed to use the new moves or not. I guess that's up for Raikou Stick to decide. But that is going to be our draft. Let me know what you think about the draft down below. Of course, the doc for the division will be down in the description as well as links to the other coaches. So I hope you guys check them all out and I hope you guys look forward to our week one match because next week I am due to be playing Ben Zossim, coach of the Portland Snailblazers, of course, in a rematch of last season's finals. So that is going to be exciting. Uh, definitely going to be a fun match. But as always, Thank you so much for watching. My name is Robombi Teacher. I'm your coach of the Royal Bomber for Bombies. Stay safe, stay awesome, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.